Good day, students. I know you are all ready for today's lesson. We will be learning about climate, factors affecting it, and some climatic phenomena that is occurring globally in present. When you plan to go to a picnic or to a beach, what are the things that you consider? Most probably, you will consider the time, place, and of course, the weather. Weather affects your day-to-day -day activities. For today, we will put emphasis with climate. So what is climate? It is the general pattern of weather in a certain period of time. To tell the climate of a certain area, scientists study its precipitation and temperature for a period of 30 years. Climate has several factors that may affect it. The first factor that may affect the climate is Latitude Latitude is a distance to the north and south from the equator. It is the imaginary line that is parallel to the equator. Latitude determines the variety of climatic zones on Earth. Our planet Earth is divided into three major climate zones, namely tropical, temperate, and polar zones. Tropical regions are the low latitude located near the equator. Temperate regions are the middle latitude and polar regions are the high latitude. Have you noticed that they are not equal? Why? Because Earth's axis is tilted in 23.5 degrees. Sun's rays strike vertically near the equator or in tropical region. This makes the temperature higher in these areas. Philippines is near the equator. That is why we are a tropical country. Areas in temperate regions have four different seasons, while the polar regions have low temperatures resulting to a cold climate. Take note of this class. Places that are near the equator have high temperature. Places that are far from the equator have low temperature or we can say as the latitude increases temperature decreases let's proceed to the second one and that is altitude why is it that during summer many people visit Baguio city obviously the reason is the cold climate there do you think the altitude of the place might affect the climate yes Altitude is the height above sea level. The air temperature decreases as the altitude increases. Places with higher elevations have cold climates just like Baguio City. For every 1,000 meters, there is a drop of 6.5 degrees Celsius. The decrease in air temperature is due to decrease in air pressure. Another example is Mount Kilimanjaro located in Africa. Africa is a place near the equator. Therefore, we expect high temperature. However, how is it possible that the peak of this mountain is covered by ice? That is because of altitude. The mountain stands 5,895 meters above sea level. Again, students, the higher the place is, the colder the temperature, or temperature decreases as the altitude increases. Third factor is bodies of water. The climate of the place is influenced by the surrounding bodies of water. Let's have an example. Look at the picture. It shows the British Isles and the part of Russia near Moscow. Being in the temperate region, both places have four seasons. Even though both places are the same latitude, the northern tip of British Isles have a more moderate climate due to the neighboring bodies of water. The British Isles experiences average maximum temperature of 17 degrees Celsius and an average minimum temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. Moscow, on the other hand, has an average maximum temperature of 21 degrees Celsius and a very cold winter with an average of negative 8 degrees Celsius. Land heats and cools faster than the sea. 
coastal areas have lower temperature than inland areas, and places that are far from the bodies of water have extreme climates. Next is topography. It is another factor that affects the climate and one of the topographic features of an area is a mountain. Let us take a look at this picture. Moist wind coming from the sea blew up the mountain because temperature decreases as the altitude increases. Water vapor eventually condenses and there is precipitation. Since this is the side of the mountain facing the wind, it is called windward side. The wind often loses its moisture content by the time it reaches the peak and thus flowing down on the other side called leeward side. Air starts to absorb heat and becomes warm and dry. As a result, the area near the leeward side becomes dry and has less precipitation. The dry region on the leeward side is called rain shadow. Vegetation in this region includes desert plants and grasslands. And lastly, we have ocean currents. Ocean currents have also had an important role in changing the climate of a certain area. Warm currents from the equator towards poles carry warm water. On the other hand, cold currents travel from the poles toward the equator carry cold water. When ocean currents carries cold water, the air above it becomes colder. When the ocean current moves to coastal regions, the temperature of the area becomes lower. On the other hand, ocean current that carries warm water makes the air warmer. When this current goes toward a landmass, the temperature of that place becomes higher. To sum it up, ocean currents that bring along cold water to inland make the climate cold. On the other hand, ocean currents that take along warm water to coastal areas make the climate warm. We will now move along and be informed of some climatic phenomena that are occurring in a global level at present. It is a given fact that global warming has become an alarming issue. Basically, global warming is the long-term warming of the planet's overall temperature. It occurs when carbon dioxide and other air pollutants collect in the atmosphere and absorb sunlight and solar radiation that have bounced off the Earth's surface. Global warming can lead to climate change. It is caused by increased concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, mainly from human activities such as burning fossil fuels and farming. Climate change refers to long-term shifts in temperatures and weather patterns. Global climate change has already had observable effects on the environment. These are some of the following. Temperatures are consistently record-breaking. Earth's temperature has risen by 0.08 degrees Celsius per decade since 1880, and the rate of warming over the past 40 years is more than twice that, 0.18 degrees Celsius per decade since 1981. 2020 was the second warmest year on record based on National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's temperature data, and land areas were record warm. Carbon dioxide concentration levels are rising. Human activities have increased the concentration of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Despite the global pandemic, the global average amount of carbon dioxide hit a new record high in 2020. Sea levels are rising. Global mean sea level has risen about 8 to 9 inches since 1880, with about a third of that coming in just the last two and a half decades. Everything is melting and the effects are major. Melting glaciers add to the rising sea levels which in turn increases coastal erosion and elevates storm surge as warming air and ocean temperatures create more frequent and intense coastal storms like hurricanes 
and typhoons. Lastly, the ocean's chemistry is changing. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, average ocean pH was about 8.2. Today, average ocean pH is about 8.1. This might not seem like much of a difference, but the relationship between pH and the acidity is not direct. Each decrease of one pH unit is a tenfold increase in acidity. It is not enough to act. We must act now. Delayed efforts to mitigate either carbon dioxide or short-lived climate pollutant emissions will have negative and potentially irreversible consequences for global warming, rising sea levels, food security, and public health. Together, we can make a difference to help solve the issue of climate change. And that ends our lesson today about climate. Thank you, students. This is Sir Clint reminding you always, continue to feed your curiosity in science.